Welcome friends to another lecture on Dr. Harit's laboratory medicine. This lecture is about LFT and I'll be talking about estimation of total proteins and albumin in the blood. Now before we understand how the proteins and albumins are estimated, we should know what are the functions of the proteins and albumin in the blood. Proteins provide osmotic pressure. What is osmotic pressure? It is that pressure that holds all the fluid within the blood vessels to maintain the blood volume and the blood pressure. Albumin is a very important transport medium. It transports bilirubin and various other substances. Proteins contain immunoglobulins which are used for protection and immunity of the body. All the clotting factors are proteins. Proteins are also hormones in nature which regulate body functions like insulin and proteins also function as nutrition. Proteins also provide buffer and regulation of the blood pH. Now, when the protein or albumin levels in the blood decreases then the ability to hold fluids within the blood vessel decreases and all these fluids escape outside now when the fluid escape outside into the leg it is called pedal edema if you press the legs you will find these big pressings within the fluid when the fluid gets accumulated in the abdomen it is called ascites and it can also accumulate in the face causing puffiness of the face. All these are signs and symptoms that the total protein in the blood is less. Now what is the relation of liver to serum proteins and albumin? All the serum proteins except immunoglobulins are produced by the liver. Uh, you could give me on the comment as to where immunoglobulins are being produced from. In severe lab liver damage, the liver is not able to produce these proteins. As a result of which, the blood serum, uh, the blood protein and albumin levels decrease and this indicates a long-standing liver disease. Total serum albumin and albumin globulin ratio is also used to detect chronic liver disease. Now, estimation of serum protein. This is done by the Biuritz test. Proteins are made up of amino acids and the amino acids. This is one amino acid. This COOH group is an acid. This NH2 group is an amino. So this is an amino acid. Proteins are formed when lots of amino acids join together by forming what is called a peptide bond this H and this OH react and come out as water and a bond is formed. This bond is called the peptide bond. Now what are the unique properties of this peptide bond is that in alkaline pH it reacts with copper ions to form a colored substance and this substance is called Biuritz test. This is copper sulfate solution in an alkaline pH and when we put proteins into it this color changes from blue to violet and this test reaction of peptide bonds with copper in alkaline pH is called the biuretz test. Now the procedure of the test is we take 0.5 ml of the biuretz reagent and add 10 microliters of the sample and incubate it for some time and then we take a reading at 546 nanometers. This test is an end point chemistry. The normal range of serum proteins is between 6 to 8 grams per deciliter. Now this test, biuretz test, cannot be used to detect CSF proteins because CSF proteins are in milligrams per deciliter whereas the serum proteins is in grams per deciliter. Therefore this test is not sensitive to pick up very low concentrations of proteins. This test, biuretz test, cannot be used for detecting the presence of CSF proteins. But this test can be used for detecting the presence of proteins in acidic fluid and total fluid because there also the concentrations are in 6 to 8 grams per deciliter. Now, when are the serum proteins high? Whenever we have infection, the serum proteins are high. This is because of the pressure of increase in the immunoglobulins. 
in a rare blood cancer called multiple myeloma there also the immunoglobulins are increased and there also we will have very high serum proteins going up to 10 to 12 grams per deciliter now in case while collecting the blood sample if the tourniquet is tied too tightly and for a very long time then also falsely we can get a high protein levels in the blood whenever there is lot loss of lot of body fluids as in cases of diarrhea like somebody suffering from cholera or when there is shock all the fluids escape from the blood vessels but the proteins being a larger molecule cannot escape from the blood vessels and they stay in the blood vessel and this makes us feel that the total proteins are high conditions where the serum proteins are low in chronic liver disease the serum proteins are low there is a kidney condition called nephrotic syndrome where a lot of albumins are lost in the urine and in that case also the total proteins come down because albumin is also a form of proteins supposing we give too much of fluid therapy to a patient we can get a low serum protein also when a blood sample is collected from an IV line if the collection is not proper then also we can get a falsely low serum protein malnutrition as in two conditions we call it protein energy malnutrition Koshyakar and Mirasmus. In these two conditions also the total serum proteins can be low. Malabsorption that is we are eating proteins but the intestines is not absorbing them. Then also we can have low proteins. There is an other condition where lot of proteins are lost from the intestines. It's called protein losing enteropathy. Pathy means an abnormality entero deals with the intestines so this is a protein losing enteropathy some problem in the intestines which is causing excess loss of proteins so these are the conditions where you can get a low serum proteins now let us change to albumin estimation albumin estimation is also based on some dye absorption test their endpoint test Currently, there are two tests available for estimation of albumin. One is called the bromocrisol green method and the other one is called the bromocrisol purple method. Most of the people do bromocrisol green. These dyes bind specifically to albumin and not uh, globulins. They bind specifically to albumin and there is a change in color and this is what we detect colorimetrically. In BCG dye, the dye is yellow in color, but when we add serum, the color changes to green and the intensity of the green color we read to estimate the concentration of albumin in the sample. This is the most commonly done test. In BCP method, that is bromocrisol purple method, this is a newly developed method. Here the color changes from yellow to purple. This test is believed to be more specific for albumin and it's supposed to be better than the BCG. But the values of albumin we get in this method is slightly lower than the values we get for albumin when we use the BCG method. This should be known. So when we are giving our test results, we should know what is the method we are using. We should know what is the normal range which is specified in the kit and we should report only on that. Now, what are the conditions when the albumin is low? The normal level of albumin in the blood is between 3.4 to 5, uh, 3.4 to 5.4 grams per deciliter. We are actually more interested in low albumin levels. Low albumin levels occur in chronic liver disease. Nowadays, if the albumin level is less than 3.2 grams per deciliter, irrespective of what the total proteins is, Irrespective of what the AG ratio is, we call this a chronic liver disease. While collecting the samples, if there is dilution, then also we can get a low albumin. In acute infections and in severe stress, like people are ad admitted in the ICU, there also we can find the albumin levels less than 3.2 grams per deciliter. But when the infection and is treated or when the critical condition is treated, then the albumins come back to normal. If the albumin levels do not come to normal, then we think in terms of a chronic liver disease. Malnutrition is a cause for low albumin. And as I had said before, 
a condition called nephrotic syndrome where lot of albumins are lost in the urine there also the total albumin levels can be low high albumin levels are very rare to find they usually indicate pro prolonged trying of the tourniquet sometimes in conditions where there's excess of loss of body fluids as in cases of dehydration shock diarrhea or burns there also we can get a high albumin level now albumin globulin ratio we can estimate the total protein in the serum by using the biuret's method we can also estimate the total albumin in the blood sample using the bcg or the bcp method so total protein minus albumin will give us the globulin concentration and now if you take a ratio between the total albumin to the total globulin in the sample we get the ag ratio albumin globulin ratio usually albumins are more than globulins and this ratio is usually more than 1 between 1.2 or something like that if the values are less than 1 it usually indicates a chronic liver disease we have two criteria for chronic liver disease the first criteria which was initially followed was that an ag ratio of less than 1 suggests chronic liver disease but the current criteria for diagnosing chronic liver disease is a serum albumin less than 3.2 grams per deciliter in a condition called multiple myeloma i said the immunoglobulin levels increase the total protein increases the albumin doesn't increase the globulin increases as a result of which the ag ratio will be low nephrotic syndrome is a condition where lot of albumin is lost in the urine because of the loss of albumin in the urine the albumin levels are low the globulin levels are normal the ag ratio becomes low and so the causes for low ag ratio is chronic liver disease myeloma and nephrotic syndrome because these two conditions could also affect the diagnosis of chronic liver disease nowadays chronic liver disease is being diagnosed when serum albumin is less than 3.2 grams per deciliter because albumin is only produced by the liver thank you very much for listening to my lecture you can contact me in my email id i have a youtube channel in english for english videos which is qs and biochemistry and i've also started a website where all my videos are available through a search engine Thank you.